Welcome back to Chameleon Sessions. I feel like I have to give you an explanation as to where I've been. So last year, May 26, 2020, I dropped Chameleon Theory Episode 7. It was supposed to be a Part A, and then Part B was going to be the completion of the whole track. When I dropped it that day, which was May 26, the family and I went out of town to celebrate my daughter's birthday. So we were out having a nice time, and occasionally I would check on the status of the video. So being on the phone, I happened to see some news, and that was the same day that the world witnessed the murder of George Floyd. And so after that had happened, my ambitions for posting music videos on YouTube seemed extremely irrelevant. There were more things that I was most interested in, which was family. That didn't mean that I stopped doing music. I have created two albums since then that have nothing to do with hip hop. I felt like I needed, I needed some time away to where I could express myself creatively uh, that was uh, much different than like the hip hop music that I have been releasing. To me, hip hop feels very direct, feels very raw and in your face. And at that time, that was not an emotion that I wanted to experience with COVID and everything else. So that is why I had not released anything else in quite some time. In March, I had come down with COVID. And since then, for some reason, there was like a clot of creativity. So from March up until recently, I had stopped creating anything and just kind of focused on work. I had a lot of changes going on at work as well. But now it has seeped back and I'm starting to create again. So that is a very good thing. There you have it. That's where I have been. And now let's move forward. So my ideas now, since I have been back uh, creating music, is to not only continue with the hip hop beat creation videos and also my chameleon theory, which is kind of like explaining what goes on in my feeble mind when it comes to music creation. I feel like I should also incorporate not just the hip hop, but also the other type of music that I create. That can be synthwave, electronic music, and also ambient style of music as well. So I really do appreciate everyone that has stuck around with me. And I guarantee you there'll be more Chameleon Session videos coming very soon. Other news, I have also acquired some extra gear. I had a friend of mine who sent me a, a message and showed me a post that was on social media from a store here in Oklahoma City that I had no idea even existed. The name of that store is JB's Analog. So I decided to go ahead and make a trip because in seeing this post, it was just amazing, man. There was, there was all kinds of different type of gear. You had reel-to-reel -reel tape machines, cassette decks, record players, old school hi-fi stereo systems and also off in the little corner in the little nook of the store was music gear apparently there was a gentleman who actually back in the day would create music for walt disney he had retired but had still continued making music and he had uh, purchased a bunch of music gear in the 80s and in the 90s continuing on he is now not passed away but has uh, I think in a, in a nursing home and has unfortunately kept from uh, creating a whole lot of uh, music so there was an estate sale and this JB's analog acquired a lot of the music gear that this gentleman uh, had so fortunately for me I was able to go in there and I was just awestruck right I always like older music gear from the 70s the 80s and in the 90s and I had ran into a lot of uh, synthesizer rack modules and a lot of other different piece of, pieces of equipment. There was one that really stuck out to me and that was the, the E5000 Ultra. That was the main reason why I went in there. And as I started thinking, I, was, I would have an opportunity to be able to purchase bulk 
So I had rounded up up to 11 or 12 modules or 11 or 12 pieces of gear. So we'll just make the list and name them all down. Number one, the Tascam MM100. This is a 16 channel line mixer. Then the next one is the Emu Proteus 1, the Emu Proteus 2. The Korg O3RW, the Korg M3R, the Korg M1R, which is the legendary M1 synthesizer in a rack mount version. Lisi's Quadroverb, the Emu E5000 Ultra Sampler, the Rollin S50 12-bit sampler, a Patch Bay, and also a Kawai MAV8, which is a, a MIDI Patch Bay. I also picked up a pretty nice little piece of gear which is this right here. This is a DBX 163X. So my homeboy, when he sent me that, and I told him, hey, I'm gonna go down there and check this place out. He says, can you do me a big favor and go ahead and pick up that DBX? I said, you talking about that compressor? He said, yeah, for sure, I want, I want that compressor. So I lumped everything in. I also forgot to mention an old school metronome. So I have, all of this stuff rounded up. We're talking about like 11 pieces, 12 different pieces, no, about 13 pieces of gear. And I had made an offer and they accepted it. And if you divide everything out, I paid on an average of about $75, uh, $75 for each piece of gear. That is not including the metronome. You can just count that as like for free. So we're talking about, I just picked up an Emu E5000 Ultra for $75. If there was anything that I overpaid for, it'd probably be this compressor. You could say I spent 75 bucks on it. That's probably what it's going for. Half price on Reverb, right? If you hop on Reverb and you find this, this uh, compressor, it's probably still going to sell for about $125. So I just literally, just, uh, to me, I stole everything. And so I've been very excited. I've been messing with the Proteus modules. I do need to replace batteries in the O3R and also the M3R and the Korgs. For some reason, these Korg rack mount uh, synthesizers, they have some kind of a battery that starts up that I need to pop out and just replace it with. Unfortunately, that's a pretty common battery, so it's not a very difficult thing to do. I just need to do it before those batteries run out because anything that I've already messed, up, uh, messed with and saved on these rack mounts will be completely lost. Other than that, everything works flawlessly. The gentleman who owned all this gear really took great care of it. And now I have a 12-bit sampling capability with the Roland S50. The Roland S50 is, you can call, for the lack of better words, like a poor man's Fairlight. The Fairlight was a massive synthesizer from the 70s and 80s that would also have an output that you can hook up a monitor to. So it was like one of the first synthesizers to where you could visually see and edit things from the synthesizer. And the Roland S50 has that capability as well. So I have one of my TVs that's hooked up to this and it just feels good. <laughs> Being able to plug that thing in just pops right on and you see the Roland S50 logo and you can sit there and edit different things uh, within the synthesizer. So I cannot wait to get really deep into that. The E5000 Ultra is something to me that is not just a sampler, but it's a very in-depth sampler. So you, I can really sound sculpt, like I can sculpt a whole lot of different sounds within the sampler. So I'll be extremely excited to go in there and just start carving out different styles of interesting sounds out of samples. I would love to hear your feedback, what you want to see from the Chameleon as far as uh, music creation, but also like the ideas that are in my small little brain and where I produce all my music. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll be dropping a video very soon. So this is Chameleon Sessions. Peace.